Okay, welcome back everybody. I'm trying to do three videos three days in a row. I just did some kind of jail ones. So I'm going to uh, kind of switch up a little bit and talk about how I got into doing what they call G for P or uh, gay for pay. It can kind of be weird talking about this topic on YouTube. Uh, they get, you know, it's a little bit, you know, the algorithm's a little bit funny. But anyways, uh, to get into that, first I have to tell you about how I got banned from my primary webcamming platform, which I won't name. Um, anyways, that platform, uh, they really crack down on like offsite communication and payment. You know, they want everything to go through their system where they get a cut. And people, you know, they know this. So they're, they're always trying to like go around it and like use Cash App or other stuff. And if you, you talk about Cash App or say, hey, talk to me on this, like to, so, you know, set up a Venmo. They'll, they'll flag you um, and you can get warnings for it. And I was not, and a lot of people make a lot of money doing this. And there's ways you can kind of tiptoe around it. Like, hey, talk to me on, you know, uh, Instagram. And then you bring it up. Um, I never was one to do this. Um, I personally didn't have a lot of success with the one on one interactions. I always made the majority of my money in like the big group shows. Um, it just wasn't worth my time. Um, so anyways, the night I got banned, I actually have the footage of. It's the night I fainted. And of course, after I fainted and my family came up and yelled at me on camera, even though it was only a second, they trip out about that. Um, not so much that the person isn't verified, but that they could potentially be underage. Now it was like an 80 year old person. So I'd not, nonetheless, I thought for sure it was because either somebody else came on camera or because I fainted that I got banned. I mean, it would have to be that. And it happened like five minutes after. So a few days later, I draft an email and, you know, kind of explain what happened. And they tell me it was actually because of facilitating offsite payments in communication. And I remember exactly what happened after I had fainted. You know, I wake up and I'm kind of confused and the chat for my show is asking me what happened. And, you know, I explain it. And there was this guy that kept asking me, what do you need to move out? And I was like, what do you need? And he kept saying, what do you need to move out? And he wouldn't explain it. And I said, dude, like at this point, I had a decent amount of money saved up. Like, you know, it only costs like two thousand dollars to move out probably for me. It's not that. It's just like the time and I'm on tether. And he just kept, at, what do you need? What do you need? And I finally was like, dude, just talk to me on Twitter. And almost immediately after that, my stream got cut. And for a minute, I wondered if it was that, but then I thought, no, it had to be that other stuff. So anyways, uh, you know, a lot of people have, have asked me about that and told me to try to get my account back. And I really want to, I'm just waiting a little bit and I'm going to email them and plead my case. Maybe, maybe start a little petition. <laughs> anyways, that was a major blow to my income. Um, I was a very popular, um, camera for somebody that was new. Um, I was always on the front page. I was doing very well. I had a big following. And right as this was happening, um, I think that's when I did my first big YouTube video, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was getting a ton of traffic and buzz. And I had just installed a tracker on my website to tra track how many hits. And I checked and it had gotten 20,000 hits in one week. And I was like, oh, man, I have to do something with this traffic more than just, you know, my stupid website. So I signed up for OF and I really had nothing on it, but I redirected my website to OF. I needed to put my time and effort into something now that camming was over because um, here's another thing with camming um, for girls. There's a ton of different sites that are financially viable for dudes. I mean, there's a ton of sites you can work on. But there's really only one big one that's really worth the money, um, at least in my opinion. So I, I decided I had to shift into um, kind of pre-recorded content. And I changed my website to redirect um, to, oh, to my subscription page. And my shit blew up. I couldn't believe it. I had a top 1% page. That's unheard of. For First of all, that's including... The, the chicks on the site, I had a top 1%. That's unheard of for dudes who are amateur like me. Unfortunately, there's a lot of demand with that. Now, when I used to do cam shows, um, I was primarily solo 95% of the time. And I did shows um, with cis women, um, you know, BBW women, uh, an older woman, and 
my trans girlfriend. And I'm, I'm happy to say my, you know, my most proud, the, the accomplishment in my whole career that I'm most proud of isn't the top 1%. It isn't when I was the number one um, male cam in the world. It was, I was number six in the couples category with a trans woman, my girlfriend, because that's unheard of for um, a trans woman to compete, a guy and a trans woman to compete in couples and get a uh, six in the world. That's really hard, especially for newcomers like us. Anyway, I'm just <laughs> tangent. So anyways, um, I knew there was a lot of pressure um, for more than solo content. Um, with webcamming, I could get away with solo content. People uh, wanted the gay for pay, and people have been asking for it a long time. And, um, you know, I'm... I, <sighs> People really, people never believe me that I'm not into it, but the amount of money that was on the table was life changing for me. I don't have these kinds of opportunities and it's not something I like, but it was something I was willing to try to make this money. Cause like I said, um, I had a top 1% page and you can't maintain that just with solo work. So I hit up a dude I knew who was also trying to get into this line of work. And that would be if you follow my channel, Carter J. Um, and he's been doing male stripping for a while. And it's let me. this is a funny story how I met him. So when me and my girlfriend were broken up for a little bit around New Year's last year, I suddenly get a message on Facebook from this dude, Carter. And he's like, hey, um, somebody recommended me to you. Uh, somebody recommended you to me to be a waiter for this show I'm putting on. You know, you'll make a ton of money. And I was like, you know, I had nothing going on. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm down. And I, I got into it. And slowly I found out more and more details. He's like, yeah, you're going to be a shop boy. And I was like, uh, okay, never heard that term before. <laughs> and then he tells me, yeah, you want to get a pair of uh, like just of Calvin Klein's. And I'm thinking like, okay, and what else? Like, <laughs> what are they? Do? Why does it matter that Calvin Klein's people aren't going to see? Then I find out, yeah, no, you're just going to be serving the shots in just the Calvin Klein's. So now an image is taking, you know, form in my head of <laughs> why I was chosen. <laughs> and then I find out further that it's not just even a party. It's not even just a gay party. It's like a uh, drag event. And now I'm thinking, like, this is uh, very specific. <laughs> you know, who exactly uh, recommended you to me? And I find out it was my other BBW ex-girlfriend. And I'm like, what, what, what the hell? You know, <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> Anyways, I ended up, um, because me and my girlfriend got back together, actually on New Year's, the day of, I ended up uh, not going through with that. Um, but I kept in touch with him on Facebook, and he saw my success with camming and OnlyFans, and he had just been starting too. So I figured uh, this would be a good guy to work with. So I met with him, and, you know, I don't think there's, like, any type of dude, like, true male that I'm into, but it's definitely not like masculine guys. Um, I will say, dude, he's a pleasure to work with in the sense that he's got a tremendous work ethic. I say that like I, he, he beats mine by two. Plus he has like another job and a family dude's a workhorse. Um, it's, it's nice working with him, but man, uh, I, I can't get over. I won't lie. Um, sex with men is not, it's not my thing. Um, and this is another thing I wanted to address. A lot of people take that in a really dark way to explain. They hear the idea that I am engaging in sex that I don't really want to have. And I think because of all the hammering of, you know, our APE culture and just this idea that, oh, you're having sex you don't want to have, that must be traumatic. That must be horrible. Um, that you, there's no way that can be okay. And it's, no, it's not like that. It's just a compromise. It's just a job to me. Afterwards, I'm glad it's over, but it's not like some quiet car ride home where there's a tear streaming down. No, I'm glad it's over and I hope the final product is good. Um, it's not some horribly traumatic experience. This is what people always say. Is this what you really want to do? Nah, but are you doing what you really want to do? 90% of people aren't, man. Most jobs suck. Um, and uh, at least 
the gay sex part of this job is only like 2% of the work week for real. The rest of the time is behind a computer or on my own. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think a lot of people, man, they get into they, a lot of my fans. They had like this, this fantasy that I was going to convert that I'd like it and all that stuff. And no, if it was I, all that same stuff with a trans woman, I'd love it's totally different. Um, something about a dude smell cologne. Oh my God. Nothing kills. Um, <laughs> you know, my interest more than cologne. On <laughs> it just is not sexual to me. <laughs> But it, it, that I go to say it's not some some horrible thing, man. Uh, I you know what it reminds me of. I always thought it was funny growing up as a kid. I don't know if kids still do this, but in the '90s, like if you accidentally saw one of your homeboys junk, you'd be like, "Oh, oh my god!" You know, like act like it was like some horrible uh, Indiana Jones in the Ark of the Cut. You know, <laughs> remember that? Oh, <laughs> and it's like, what do you mean? I have those same pieces too. They can't. So why wouldn't they gross you out that much? And I'm not I'm not saying I really want to, but but it's just it's not the worst thing, you know. And it's I, I got to say that it's changed my life. It's been life changing money. I have like, you know, a therapist asked me, when's the last time I've been happy like this? And I never have been, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's kind of a, that that uncomfortable feeling has led to some truly beautiful things in my life. And uh, I'm grateful for all the people that supported me and buy the content and just watch the YouTube because it, it all has fueled that. So yeah, I really wanted to dispel that when people act like it's some, Oh, bad thing. Like there's no, don't get me wrong. I bet there's a lot of dudes who can't do gay for pay without it messing with them bad. I bet there, I know a ton of dudes. You definitely got to be built for it, but if you are, man, it's nothing. And it's uh. Pretty good on the pretty good on the pay, especially when you don't have the opportunities like me. Um, I have no idea how long this video went. I know I rambled. I do want to get this out today, and I want to say thank you. Thank you to all my fans, long ones, new ones. Like and subscribe. Check the website. But more importantly, just keep coming. I appreciate all of you. Thank you.